Hello folks, Florentine Santif here. Welcome to my wave of love event walkthrough. This video will be broken down in two parts. First, I'll give you a full explanation of the event so you can refer to it when the event cycles back next time. The second part will cover everything about the current third anniversary wave of love we're having, so buckle your seatbelt. Wave of love is a recurring event that pops up every four weeks. It's bound to the Emperor of Passion title, and I believe it's the only title that can be claimed by three players instead of the regular one. Your basic goal is to collect various items from many sources, trade those items for points and exchange points for rewards. It also features a special card recruitment part that I'll discuss later. The event starts on Friday of week 4 and lasts for 7 days. As such, it overlaps the Intimacy Challenge on Monday and the Cross-Server Intimacy Challenge on Wednesday. Wave of Love is pretty straightforward and always features the same quests and mini-challenges. As such, I managed to build a spreadsheet that can help you figure out how many points you're going to score, based on your activity on said quests and challenges. You can find the link in the description of this video. The spreadsheet is on read-only mode, so you want to save a copy on your own drive to be able to interact with it. It can help you planning your expenses during the event or see if you can reach one wanted reward you have in mind, so I hope you will make good use of it. If you have any questions or feedback about it, please leave a message on the comments section to let me know. The first source of points and items will come from the event itself that offers you a couple of quests to work on. The first one is straightforward, it's a daily login one so you should not have much trouble with that. You also have an increased intimacy quest, as well as an increased charm quest. The bad thing about it is that the charm one comes right after charm and cross server charm challenges, so you have to adjust accordingly to perform reasonably well on both. What I do is that I set up a goal for Wave of Love, say the 2000 or 5000 charm increase quest, and dump any extra charm I might have on challenges. It won't make a difference if you dump 2000 or 3500 charm during Wave of Love, so you might as well convert these extra items on challenges, or save them for the next one. On the other hand, the good thing is that intimacy challenges start on Monday, so you can have both worlds here if you wait for Monday to dump your intimacy. If you're an old enough account, save your goodwill drafts for it as well. You can burst hundreds of bottles each day without ever losing any grain in the process, and this will yield you a significant amount of intimacy. But if you release new maidens during the event, be sure to only use them after you've made your paid visits, otherwise they might give unwanted intimacy to your new maidens for an increased paid visit cost. You don't want that. Note that unlocking a new maiden skin that boosts intimacy of said maiden will count for both the event and the challenge, so do that as well. Intimacy and charm quests will give you a lot of points, and are pretty much mandatory if you want to buy the most expensive rewards of the shop. You definitely want to plan this ahead of time and save a good amount of resources for the event if you want to perform well. The last quest is an individual points progress one, and will give you extra items when you break some individual's milestones. Items also come from the continual top-up tab. This one is optional as you can very well play the event without spending money, but you will get decent items if you do. Buying a $1 pack every day for 7 days shows an acceptable return on investment. Similar to that, for the first 5 days of the event you have an alliance base spend money tab. The more players from your alliance spend money during a day, the more rewards everyone will get, including those who did not spend at all. While rewards from that are small, it's still better than nothing. Two specific challenges occur when Wave of Love is active, with progress rewards and rankings rewards for each of them. The first one is a random visit to Maiden's Challenge. It used to happen at the same time of the Increase Maiden XP Challenge but not anymore, so again you will have to use your stamina drafts accordingly. The number of visits you get from every stamina draft is tied to your VIP status. Because I know you're lazy, I've made the calculations for you and here is on screen how many stamina drafts you need to reach each progress reward of the challenge according to your VIP rank. Needless to say, if you're about to use a significant amount of stamina drafts, be sure to activate a romantic buff before dumping your bottles. The second one is a paid visit to Maiden's Challenge. It's the perfect time to unlock your new Maidens because they start with one intimacy, so the cost of paying a visit will be at its lowest. If you have multiple new ones, you can optimize your process in order to save as many gems as possible. Here is on screen the amount of gems you will need to reach every progress rewards. These challenges are a good source of items and points, but you might want to skip the second one if you don't own any new maiden to unlock. 
limited offers can also help you getting more points, but the return on investment is usually not that great so you might want to save up your gems here unless you really want something. You can also get items from recruitment cards you open, so let's talk about said recruitment cards. They work like ordinary recruitment cards you get from Kingdom Expeditions, with a featured hero or two that have an increased chance of being opened. The biggest flaw of those cards is that if you open a new hero, he automatically will be summoned, you don't get his fragments or tokens. That's a huge risk if you have too many heroes already, so be careful about that. If you open a hero you already own, you will get fragments or tokens instead. For every 100 cards you crack during the event, you will get to choose between a couple of options of heroes fragments or tokens as a reward. It's a great way to improve your heroes paragons. A good thing to know is that if any unopened recruitment cards are saved for the next wave of love, you don't lose them when the event ends. The same is true for your chest rewards progression, including any number of chests you haven't claimed yet. It's a nice way to save them up for when a hero you really want to build is available. All those features are pretty much individual based, but the event also offers an alliance based part. Every item an alliance member converts into points will help the alliance to progress through the featured maiden tiers on the main screen. There are 10 tiers, and every time your alliance breaks a tier, members will get rewards based on their individual contribution rankings from the beginning of the event. You can check rewards and rankings by clicking on the heart close to the maiden. There is also an alliance rankings that will rewards the most active alliances at the end of the event. Most significant rewards are recruitment cards, fragments and quality items. This could lift a small war between alliance members, especially if your alliance is very active. The first few tiers are easily reachable, and you might miss rewards if you didn't start playing and scoring points early enough on the first day. As such, I suggest you to dump your charm right when the event starts to at least score those points, and to go for the random visit challenge after that to convert your progress rewards items. Bottleneck here is the love perfume item. You always will be short of it. Best income of love perfumes is the money shop, and the most expensive ones usually give a good number of them. But that's real money and all packs are overpriced, so do not overspend and always think about what you could have bought in the real world with that money. Anyway that pretty much covers it all, I think. I like Wave of Love because you can rip great rewards with no or minimal spending, as long as you use your resources at the right time. If you apply all advice I gave you, you should be able to perform well. About the undergoing Wave of Love event, I don't see any change from last month. So no surprise here, we just have to take a look at the featured heroes in the shop. Featured heroes are Boars and Asenath, at least for recruitment cards. I think it's great to have Boars available here. All players will get their 50 free frags from 3rd Anniversary Progress Rewards, and you can work on building him this Wave of Love. If you've watched my Provision Heroes review, I consider Asenath as the worst Provision Heroic Maiden, so you're most likely going to run into her if you push recruitment cards for boars. That's the risk you have to accept. For me it was a no-brainer since I already have Asenath unlocked, so I was more than happy to finally open my 450 recruitment cards I'd been saving for months and a good opportunity. I now have a fully build boars because I also own his skin, his maiden and her skin for months. Remember that boars is the best military hero out there, and he doesn't show up very often. Being able to get some of him for free, just by doing quests, is a good deal you shouldn't overlook. Point Shop also offers the opportunity to work on Lord Balak, but is there a single player that actually started building him when he was available alongside Hans? I don't know. If it's your case, well, do what you have to do. A new Demir skin is available. I'm not as thrilled as the Dilnayot one because Demir is not a deflection zodiac hero so he's a little worse, but that's still fine. Biggest flaw I see is that his fragments are not an option on the progress chest from recruitment. Big mistake there from developers. But what did you expect? They had to screw something up, right? If you still haven't got them, Elise skins are purchasable too, at a reasonable price. A nice option as well. Choices are scarce for tokens and fragments as we only have Elise, Circe, Adira and a couple of Zodiacs, of course not including Demir. Well, that's fine by me because this should be your lowest priority on this shop. Should you go all in? Not really, because spending gems or money in this event is bad, actually. But if you plan this wave of love all along, you should be able to get something of your liking. And if you have lots of recruitment cards but not boars to max, it's time to make the jump and open those cards. You'll end up with a top tier event hero, one of the best of the game. Yes, you might open bad ones along the way, 
but you always have exile to get rid of them. In the end my only complaint here is Demir fragments not being available. Other than that, no surprise from this last event of 3rd anniversary. I feel okay overall with what they did this year. Exchange rates were fair or even good. Of course actual gameplay could have been better, and I really hope they revert back to old Battlefield of Glory. And you guys, what do you think of those events? Are you happy to see boars featured in that last event? Let me know in the comments. I hope this video will help you performing better on next wave of love events and until next time, bye bye.